the fourth day of the Abhidhamma study class of the Winmeta Dhamma team. Uh, we're here and happy to see you again. Today, the Venerable Pinyadika Lingara will teach us about the Pali pronunciation method in addition to the usual one hour lecture on the Abhidhamma. We will also learn about the 31 planes of existences today. Uh, so for today's agenda, uh, for 5.30 to 6, where we would normally have our review session, we will be, uh, we will allow the Venerable Pina Tika Lingara to help us with the Pali pronunciation method. Uh, this is, I believe, a one-time event, so the, you know, you are very fortunate to, to attend. Uh, and then from 6 to 7, we will have our usual Abhidhamma lecture. And then from 7 to 7.30, we have our usual question and answer session. And after that, we will have our sharing merits and we will end the class. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, begin with their opening Namotata. Uh, Zayado, would you like to lead us in the Namotata? Okay, let's pay homage to the Buddha reciting Namotasa three times together. <clears throat> Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa uh, So for our second uh, item on the agenda, we will begin with the Pali pronunciation method. Uh, Sayara, would you would you like to start? Okay. Yeah. yeah, welcome to the okay. new class. This is only for the pronunciation, not for the Pali understanding. Yeah, that, but to, to understand the Pali language, it will take time. But to know how to pronounce the Pali text is not that difficult. No, not that difficult. Uh, if you are already familiar with the a Pali test chanting is more e uh, easier, easier than others. So now before uh, we go to the text, I would like to introduce uh, about the Pali alphabet. Here uh, with the Burmese um, alphabet to make uh, easier to understand for the Burmese speaker. And so we can understand the first of all the vowel, the eight vowel in Pali. And Pali pronunciation is quite easy because there are only a few vowel, a few vowel, so not that difficult. The people thinking that Pali and Buddhism together. And Pali, the language which breathes off in it and the Buddhism. That is why people in the people's mind, it becomes special and also think very difficult. Actually not that difficult, right? So uh, make yourself comfortable in Pali reciting, Pali pronunciation, okay? And yeah, if we start with the R, this E in English is called, we call the R in Pali. So R and with the sign uh, here, the R, so short and long, they come together. So in the pair, so R and R. So if we make double R, it become R. So duration is double. The one here, the vowel, the duration of vowel in the recitation is, is I'm just say measure uh, by the blinking. Like the one blink, the duration of one blink is the, the duration of reciting or R. The so one thing up, not very short, and usually in Myanmar, very short. But in Sri Lanka, quite longer. Right? So up uh, is okay, but we don't need to make it very short up uh, like this. Up, uh, then doubling the duration or up uh, become ah. Uh, so ah, uh, ah, uh, like this. And e here, and e also making double. Ah, uh, ah, uh, e. E. Then this U is U in Pali is uh, pronounced as U. And making, making double 
duration u u u and the the, the remaining two are not in the pair so a this also considers as a long longer one so a it should not be not a the a and the, the last one o in english is called all so the we have the five long uh, duration hours and uh, three short duration power. So not difficult. R, R, E, E, U, U, E, O. <clears throat> then uh, all together for the consonant 33. The for Myanmar is uh, same. That's why for Myanmar speaker is not difficult. So here, uh, in each row, five consonants. Ka, ka. So ka because the k e ka, and k h e ka. Ka, ga, nga. But in the Pali pronunciation system, you know that. Location also identify. Location. Here, this first row of ka, 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 nga. They come in their, uh, they are located in the throat at this. But actually, if you were trying to find out where this, uh, this alphabet is located, uh, it's difficult to pronounce. But if you just follow the natural, uh, pronunciation, then you, you find out to make correction later. It's okay. And so, ga, ka, ga, ga, ma. Actually, the, um, the consonant itself uh, is very short. Consonant itself uh, is very short. It is just a half, duration is just a half of the uh, blinking, one blink. It's very short. That's why, for its uh, if we pronounce only consonant without the here, the ka is a combination of k consonant and a power a power. So ka plus a become ka. This power is uh, is cannot pronounce clearly. Still can pronounce, but cannot pronounce clearly. That is why uh, the consonant usually come with the ending power. So we can pronounce ka, ka with the ending power of a. So ka, 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 nga. Here are also two, um, the only a little bit change, the ka and ka. But in the first and second one, ka and ka, different sound already. But in ga and ga, yeah, the isra wa ish, so ga, it's become stronger. So if you recite the sang ko or sang gam, it's different from the ga ka. So stronger, little bit stronger. Sang gam, saranam, ga cham, ga, ga, ga is a little bit softer than the ga, gha. And this is a difference between the, uh, the, the third column and fourth column, mostly. And nga, this nga, the Indian roll, this fight have the soft, uh, soft uh, sound, nga, not that strong as the, the former four. Ka, 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 nga, nga become you no know, open. Usually open the, the mouth, that's why it becomes soft. Then second rose in Myanmar it, pro, it is pronounced as sa. Sa. And, but in international Roman pronunciation is called cha. So we cha charana sampano in in the Roman pronunciation. International Pali pronunciation, we cha charana, they are charana sampano. But in Myanmar pronunciation, we sa sarana 
tampano. So many difference. But if you know the key how to change Myanmar pronunciation to international party pronunciation, only a few change. But if we reside in Myanmar way, and most of the our foreign students cannot understand what does mean that. Even with beside them, Karani Yamada Suda, very popular one to every everyone, but still difficult to understand in Myanmar way. And so if here better to keep the international pronunciation because we have all a foreign student. And if you want to recite by yourself as a chanting, a daily chanting, and you can recite in Bamis, no problem. So here we were prefer cha. And for the second one, cha. Like in Myanmar, it is called sa. That is why Buddha Sarana Gisami Myanmar, Gisami. Right? In international party pronunciation, Kachami. So like this. Sa and cha. Sa and cha, the chain. And in third one, cha. So in Myanmar, it is called za. Sa and in international party pronunciation, ja. And here, JH. So, you know, with cha in Myanmar and with cha, the pronunciation with cha, charana sampano, with cha here, cha. But it's a little bit different from the wa jana. If we talk about the jana, the jana, this one, this one, if have the uh, stronger or harder pronunciation, with cha and jana. So a little bit different. So if we know this different and we can continue and nya. So nga nya. So this mostly open. That's why soft. We are also the end one nya. And uh, two ending powers, they have a different sign. So nga nya na na ma. Okay, so after second uh, rows, it goes to the third row. It ta with do here ta, but in Pali this ta is usually used, but in Myanmar rarely used. Myanmar also share the same in all uh, same consonants, but in this uh, line Myanmar rarely used, but in Pali many times it is used. So ta 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 da na. Then uh, the same, almost the same pronunciation, just a different is location. So location, uh, did this also pronounced as ta. Yama no different. But in Pali, uh, different, but that different is important only when we recite the official, official recitation of Kamawaja. In case of Kamawaja, we have to focus on the difference between this ta and this ta. But in other recitation, it is no problem because very similar. As the, this line, the happen in the in the top of the tongue, and the other line happen in the uh, in the tooth. So tooth and and top of the tongue touching together make the sound. Da, ta, da, da, na, like this. So this also ta, ta, da, da, na. And for Myanmar recitation of Myanmar was very difficult to identify these two lines or to, to differentiate. But um, still, okay, we can pronounce uh, in both lines ta, ta, da, da, na. Ta, ta, Da, da, na, okay. Then this one, pa, pa, and adding H here, pa, is softer than the, the first one. Pa, pa, and pa, ba. So here, pa and ba. Pa, pa, like this, ma. Just a little bit different uh, at the beginning. You cannot classify by yourself. And later, and uh, you need to identify this one is at the third one or fourth one. At that time, uh, you can classify. 
and making a little bit change. Okay, and mark this. <laughs> and so in Pali, they are called the group power, a group consonant, 25. Then let's eight, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one will make a problem if we, we don't pronounce properly. The ra is called ra. We call the raja. Raja bawadu damiko at the time. Ra. That's ra. And la va. In, in Myanmar, it is pronounced uh, wa, but actually va in, in international body pronunciation is va. And sa. Yeah, international body pronunciation sa, but in Myanmar, ta. That is why Buddha, Dharana. <coughs> in Myanmar, pronounced that Buddha, Dharana, Gisami. But international body pronunciation, Buddha, Saranam. So saranam gachami. And ha, this one, ha open and uh, mouth, ha. And here this la and la, pronunciation same. Only in the Pali, <coughs> sorry. Uh, in the Pali uh, vocabulary, some changes, different. Uh, usage according to la and la, this la and la, but pronunciation, no problem, same. And here, the last one in Myanmar, it is used as a a, ah, the less consonants, but here in, <coughs> in Pali, it is called the an. Actually, that an is uh, together with the a ah, become an. Actually, it is only the dot which is uh, only the dot, which uh, usually is it at the end of the short power. So we can connect this one with the short power, three short power. So short power are A, E, U. These three are short power. So if we combine this, this one to pronounce with the short power, it become together with A, become um. About dumb, um, like this, and it together with the it, it become a, a, and together with ut, it become o, and the big home or like this. So, uh, th these are uh, the power and consonants. But to keep in, I will share this uh, this file to the group and. Uh, the organizer was sent by email. So, okay, so before we conclude this, uh, we need to read the text in order to know better to apply directly the text. And, and for the next class, I will explain how it becomes the a combination of the vowel and consonant together. But doesn't matter, we don't need to complete all in one class. Okay, so, sorry, let's continue reading here yeah, the Pali text. And Tamachaka Bodhana Siddha, as usually, come on to uh, everyone who recited in daily chanting, the Tamachaka Bodhana Siddha. And like this, here, E Kam Samayan, E, because only E, E is pronounced as E. So E, and here, K, K is Ka, K is Ka. And a plus um. Yeah, I said that this is uh, the last one. The last one together with short power a become um. So ka plus uh, um come uh, with the a a come. So a come. So in this case, beside this one, the less power, which is called nikahida, the dot only small one. That if we recited the recitation system, say. You need to close your mouth. Close your mouth after reciting. So ikam, not ikam, like this. Uh, if usually in Myanmar, uh, when recite ikam, samayan, but opening after reciting this one is not correct. So it should be closed. Ikam, samayam, yeah, also yam. Ikam, samayam, like this. 
So this is how to pronounce this one, uh, Nikahita, which is called Nikahita. Um, um or M or Om or three can be possible. And here, Samaya S E M E Y E M. So consonant come with a vowel. So we divide it of or one syllable. So one sa ma yam become samayam. Because these three syllables uh, express the one meaning. That is why we need to recite them uh, as one wa. So samayam. Ikam samayam. Then ba ka wa. Not difficult, right? Ba ga wa. So because this is long, ah, uh, ah, uh, so ah, uh, wa. So in Myanmar is called pronounced as a wa, but in international public pronunciation, wa, baga wa, like this. So not clearly to the wa, it's become wa, and baga wa. And so in this way, uh, you can practice uh, dividing, uh, because the consonant is a uh, cannot. Cannot stand. That's why consonant usually depends on any power. So we have to find the power to make a pronunciation. So ba, ga, wa. In this way, uh, we can pronounce. Ikam samayam bagawa. Then ba, ra, na, si, yam. So uh, dividing, dividing for one syllable. At the end of the power, at the end of the power, at the end of consonant, we cannot we cannot like this, and we just need to combine consonant to power. Ba, ra, na, si, yam. So para na si yam. In Myanmar is ti, but is here si para na si yam. And we have red ti. So Pali is not difficult to pronounce here. We have the We have the Then here, uh, if vowel come, it's uh, at, at the beginning, like the e comes e, so it pronounced separately. E. And also here, the vowel e come first. At the beginning of the wall, it pronounced it said, that's why e separately. Then C. That me. So uh, we can do that. E, C, Pa, Ta, Ni. So E, C, but then Ni. Then Mi, Ka, Da, Ye. Why E, Ye? So Mi, Ka, Da, Ye. Because E is A in, in Pali Roman. So O is all. You just need to remember this chain. Then, so mi m ka plus mi ka ta ye. So let, let's recite together the first line. E kam samayam agava aranasiyam viharadi isi patani mi ka ta ye. Yes, that's all. Not that. If you can recite in this this time uh, in this system, and you can recite all the like that. no problem. Okay. okay, I think there are, this is enough for today's, and we will start another session soon. <clears throat> so, do you have any question about this uh, system or pronunciation for Bali? <clears throat> Bande, please uh, take us to the Abhidhamma lecture. Yeah. <clears throat> today. Thank you, Bande. Okay.
and this is our uh, today's lesson is about the 31 plane or existence, right? Let's grab that day. Okay, thank you. So we already introduced about the uh, beta mark. What is a beta mark? And to know that what is a beta mark, and hope you remember about the beta mark. And also classification, uh, a beta mark and dhamma. And I want to say that making difference why it is called a beta mark. And a bit dhamma and profound dhamma taken out of the dhamma itself, because dhamma referring to the sutta, sutta dhamma at the time when we say that dhamma. So profound dharma taken off from the sutta teaching are considered as a bit dharma. So the word a bit is profound or special, special dharma. Because one, the reason why that dharma taught in the a bit dharma teaching is considered as that profound or special is related to the ultimate realities related to the ultimate realities. So that really is it, not in the conceptual knowledge, in the intrinsic nature, in their uh, own transit, intrinsic nature, which is called in Pali, Sabhava. They really is it, or the consciousness, making awareness to the object. That's the nature of consciousness. It never changed. Also, it is in the nature, not made by anyone, not created or not, not managed by anyone. Consciousness itself is it in its own nature to aware the object. And manifestos, each, you have done all together 52 manifestos which is called Jita Sika in Pali. And the fact that they have their own, uh, their respective characteristic. So for example, Loba, greed, have the, uh, the nature to want something to get like this. And Dosa, getting angry, it has a specific nature, never changes. For that person or for this person, they come in it is all interested nature. Like this. So these are mental factors. And also materialities. We have a materiality in our body, physical body. This is all the components of or the phenomena of materiality come in their own nature. For example, but we do is only hardness or softness like this. It has a specific nature, never change. And this is the materiality, matter. And Nibbana, uh, as the ultimate piece, which can be the object of uh, path and fruition of Mega and Palajita. It also never change, it come in the, in the characteristic of its own nature. In Abhidhamma, these four realities are widely explained. Every explanation leading to or connected to this ultimate reality. That is why the teaching of Abhidhamma is considered as a profound Dhamma other than Dhamma, a common Dhamma. And this is uh, for the first class, just to remind. And so if we talk about the uh, Abhidhamma as the teaching related to the ultimate reality of Jitta, Jitta Sika, Rupa, Nibbana. Jitta translated as consciousness. Jitta Sika translated as mental fetus. Rupa, matters, and Nibbana. It's usually hit in the, in the same name of Nibbana because it's the and difficult to translate into English. And also in Yama, we don't translate, we just say Nibbana, Nibbana. 
So because it is hard to find the, uh, the Bhagavari, which can be uh, the same expression as the one Nibbana in Pali. That's why I'm better to keep it in Nibbana. And if we talk about the, the ultimate reality, that is true in the ultimate things. But in daily life, in our understanding, our understanding is not always directed to the ultimate reality. That is why we need that conceptual understanding and the level of conceptual understanding. We need the, the term based upon the concept, which is called panyati. So we call that human, human being. That, that is panyati. What we call human being is the combination of mental process and material process. Nothing is existing all the time to be a human being. But in our mind, so our body is existing here and our mind also the whole day or the whole month or like this. This is concept. As long as our understanding not fit with the nature, nature reference to the ultimate realities. As long as our mind or understanding not fit, firmly fit with the ultimate reality, that understanding will be on the conceptual understanding. And also usage needs, the usage of conceptual, uh, the usage depends on the concept is neat. For example, if we say the process of mentality and process of materiality is here, and also you will say the same things. That's why we cannot identify one after another, one and another. So women or men, we cannot identify because all our process of mentality and materialities, animal and human, that is the same. So to identify, to differentiate one and another, we need the usage, which based on the concept, panyati. So we say the human being, and also bhikkhu and lay people. And also come in the personal name. So we can understand all the name as a panyati. If we conclude, the word conceptual terms, we get the name. If we call the uh, individual person, also there is a concept, a group of materiality and mentalities are called the uh, individual or pukala, like the person. A dog also the same, a cat also the same. So we, we keep the banyati. And also if we call them uh, mobile phone, computer, group of materialities are called by their name, all come into their class, uh, into the title of the name called the Banyati. Okay, so according to Abhidhamma teaching, the ultimate realities arising and passes away, condition of ultimate reality or consciousness, mental factors, and materialities arising and passes away in their nature. But different in different form in different place, need the conceptual name. So we give the name, this is human, this is Dewa, this is Brahma, this is animal, this is house and chair, etc. Or we give the specific name and we call. Okay, so in this way, uh, the understanding about the plane of existence and beings need to be identified. So here, according to Abhidhamma teaching, we, were, uh, we need to classify the 31 plane of existence. Uh, we will see here. So if you can pronounce in Pali, uh, this slide will be easier. Uh, if you see difficult to pronounce, you know, even the name, uh, quite difficult to, uh, to pronounce. 
but as a matter of, you know that here I will introduce in Pali first because uh, better to keep in their name of the Pali Pali name and from from the beginning so the lower state so altogether 31 planar existence if we roughly uh, identify classify two groups Kama Wachara Kama Wachara cause the sensual beings sensual planar existence so if we talk about the being Kama Wachara is sensual beings if we talk about the plane or existence, there's a, the, the place for the uh, beings. Uh, it is called the sensual plane or existence. So altogether, 11 sensual plane or existence and 12 Brahma realms become the 31 plane or existence. Then we can classify more uh, 11. Kama Vajra, sensual plane, become woeful state, a baya. Four are not good destination. They are evil destination or woeful state, a baya. And the seven, Kama Sukati. So Kama referring to sensual, Sukati is blissful. So sensual, blissful plane, seven. So in the next slide, I already give the translation. And don't worry, just to keep... Uh, to reach what is that, and so classification, and four apaya and kama sukati seven become the eleven kama vachara. What are the four apaya? Is niraya? We already uh, translate the hell as the hell niraya, and tirichana animal, uh, animal planes, but not a specific planes of animal. Uh, it share they share with their human beings. So tirichana, uh, beta. Beta usually translated as the hungry ghost, hungry ghost. And those hundreds, different types of hungry, hungry ghosts will be. Some powerful, some are suffering in their life. They are beta, they are called in Bali beta. And Asura Gaya, uh, Asura Gaya is usually uh, the name give the Asura. Also, they are in suffering in their life. Four are suffering. So they are called Apaya four. Then become Manusa. Manusa is human being. After Manusa, sit Dewa realms or sensual Dewa. In order to classify with the Brahma, higher beings, they call the Kama Vachara because they are under the classification of uh, sensual plane of existence. They still six Dewa realms. Dewa realms are, they are called the celestial beings. Celestial beings are Dewa. And usually we use Dewa and Kama Vajra, Dewa 6. So Manusa becomes the seven uh, blissful plane or existence, Kama Sukati. So seven. Then if we classify six Dewa rent by their name, yeah, Chattu Maharajika Raja, or it's called as Chattu Maharajika, and Tawa Tensa. Tawa Tensa. A very popular one and Yama to sit down also very popular because uh, body set out before they came here to become a Buddha and they were born and lived in the to sit realm. And Nimana Rati and Pranimita Wasawati. The highest Diva realm also very popular because uh, that is the place of the Mara. I uh, may know the Mara and not the Dewa, very naughty Dewa. It, uh, that powerful Dewa is one of the uh, Dewa from the Pranamita Saudi higher realm of the Kama Vajra Dewa 6. So now we understand about the 11 Kama Vajra realm. So for the 20 Brahma realms, the Brahma realm, uh, being can be reborn in Brahma realm as a Brahma, at the very powerful beings. Through the practice of concentration meditation. So one practice the concentration meditation and successful to attain the level of, of jhana. And according to the jhana, he reborn in the Brahma. So the first jhana realm is called the 
Pratama Jhana. So after the attainment of first jhana, you will be born in the any of the Pratama Jhana realms three. So here, if we classify the Brahma realms according to their nature, this is a Rupa Brahma. Rupa is materiality. So those Brahma uh, have their materialities. They are called the Rupa Brahma. There are 16 realms of existence for that types of Brahma. And the other four does not have the materiality, only the mental process. All of these three considered as a being. Beings, only the process of mentality is called the Arupa. Here, the A, the Wa, in the Pali, you, the A usually express the absent or the negative meaning. So rupa is the materiality. So a ah, by the wall, ah, it becomes the offset. So no materiality. No materiality means that Brahma are only the process of mentalities. So we were explaining about the uh, different types of living beings. At that time, you will understand more. Here, the, the, in the sensual world, uh, all beings belong to the, both materiality and mentalities. In the Brahma realms, uh, all Brahmas have the materialities. And in the Arupa Brahma here, uh, the Rupa Brahma realms, all the Brahma belong to uh, have the materialities. But in the Arupa realm, they don't have materialities, only mentality process, process of mentalities. Okay, so let's continue to classify the Rupa Brahma, 16 realms of Rupa Brahma. What are they? So according to the attainment of jhana. So first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and in Abhidhamma is up to the fifth jhana. So before we continue, I would like to introduce this two system of counting jhana, counting jhana. According to Abhidhamma teaching, there are five jhana. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, up to five jhana, fifth jhana. So altogether five jhana, according to the classification of Abhidhamma. But in the Sutta, it is mentioned only four jhana. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. There is no fifth jhana in Sutta teaching. Never explain about the fifth jhana. What made the difference is because of the, um, in the Abhidhamma classification, five jhana of second and third. Five jhana of second and third become one. Is they are collectively recognized as one second jhana in the Sutta teaching. That is why uh, one drop in the Sutta system. So in Sutta system, there are only four jhana up to four. And in the Abhidhamma system, uh, five jhana. So uh, this information need to uh, keep in mind. Otherwise you can get confused. Okay, so no problem. Let's continue about the plane of existence. There the plane is the first jhana plane after the attainment of first jhana. So concentration level. Certain concentration level is recognized as the Fajana after practicing the concentration meditation. Then it is called Fajana. Also, it can be a different and three different level according to the power. And the, the weakest one is called the Fajana in the first class, and medium one. And the powerful, the most powerful first jhana. So here, Brahma Parisaja, Brahma Prohita, Maha Brahma. These are three first jhana realms. At the beginning, if you try to remember all the names, it will be very difficult. You don't need to memorize everything at the beginning. You just need to study, finding out this is first jhana three, okay? Trying to pronounce one time. Second time become a family, 
and later you can remember all plane of existence. So uh, it is not necessary to memorize in short time, better to read again and again. And for the second jhana, if after the attainment of first jhana, one continue practicing in concentration meditation to develop the power of concentration and attain the second jhana. After the attainment of second jhana, he reborn. Uh, and also third jhana, the attainment of third jhana also, he reborn in the um, second jhana realms. There are three, Pritdhava, Abhamanava, Abhasava. They are the name. And after that, if continue, the attainment of four jhana, yeah, yeah, the four jhana called reborn in the third jhana realm. So he reborn in the third jhana realm, Pritta Suba, only the Vasu is inserted in the former one. Yeah, Pritava become Pritta Suba. Abhamanava become Abhamana Suba. But for the last one, it totally changed. Abha Saradu Suba Kena. This is also the name of the third jhana realm. Then, if one continue to practice to attain their fifth jhana, yeah, fifth jhana caused to reborn in the four jhana realms. That's why the, there are seven four jhana realms. The, the lowest one is called Vihapala, then Asanya Sada. This one is very strange. You know, Asanya Sada, the beings who does not have mentalities, so no mentality at all, no consciousness, no feeling. No perception. So only the group of materialities are recognized as Brahma in that realm of existence. That also be, uh, becomes due to the power of the concentration. The power of concentration removes the potency of the mentalities arising. Then no more mentality for that life. Uh, like a like a statue, he, he lives there, only the matriarchy group, but still it is considered as, as their living being, living being. But, okay, let's continue. And Sutawasa fight. There are five plane of existence. Sutawasa, here Sutta is pure. Awasa is place. So pure place. Why is this fight are called pure place is this? Uh, the place for the highest noble person, Arahat, and two Arahata, Mega and Pala, and Anagami. So they are the highest noble person and highest individual. Those already expel the defilement, already remove the defilement uh, for the Arahat completely or the Anagami. Only some parts remain. That's why uh, the place of these pure individuals is regarded as a pure abode, pure abode, quite pure abode. So if we tell by their name, Awiha, Atapa, Sudasa, Sudasi, and Akanita. So here should be inside a H, Akanita. Okay, these are 16 Rupa Vachara Bhumi, 16 fine material sphere realm of existence. And so if we count back, then three first jhana, three second jhana, three third jhana, all together nine, and seven fourth jhana realm becomes 16. So all these, uh, all beings in all these Brahma realms have the materiality aggregates. Although this one only materiality aggregate and the others have their both materiality and mentality, they are Name by their materiality uh, aggregate. That's why right. Rupa Brahma, 16 types, 16 realm of existence. Then for the Arupa realm, the other uh, beings in four realms of existence only process, only the process of mentalities, no materiality at all. That is why they are regarded as the Arupa realm. The first one is called Akasa Nanjayadana. And later I will explain how the, the name comes and how the meditator practice to attain this level to be reborn as only the mental process being. Okay, so just uh, to continue the name, 
Vinyana Jayatana, Ya Vinyana consciousness. Akencha Nyayatana, Nivasanya, Nasanyayatana. So here the Nivasanya, Nasanyayatana, realm of existence is the highest one, highest plane of existence. And here the Nidhya is considered as the lowest plane of existence according to the system of the 31 plane of existence. And this is my introduction about the 31 plane of existence in Pali name. So in Pali name, so we need to continue on uh, together with the uh, English translation also so that our English speaker can understand. And so just to introduce here, I uh, shall translate as Nirea, Animal Kingdom, Irichana, Peter, Spear of Peter, Henry Ghost, etc. But the other types also uh, in English. And Asura, the host of Asura, just for the Asura. And maybe you ever heard about that, you have ever heard about the um, story of the Saka when they came to the uh, Tower Tensa, the second realm of the uh, Dewa, the Saka. The previously, the native Dewa are there already before they arrive. And, and when the Saka arrives and Saka uh, came on Dewa, he does, does not like, they didn't, didn't like the, their behavior and their practice. That's why uh, when the, the native they were drunk and at that time, and they removed from the kingdom of the Saka and they occupied the Saka. And they class are also called the Asura, Asura. But they are considered as the Tower uh, Tensa Dewa realms, not the Abaya. So uh, here, I would like to introduce the two class of the Asura. Two class of Asura. One Asura is, uh, is uh, understood as there, a woeful plane of existence. And another Asura is Dewa Asura. So Dewa Asura are, are being in the second plane of Dewa Ren, Tower Tensa. And this is a difference I have to notice. Otherwise, you can get confused when we heard about the Asura, what happened. This is different from what I have heard. Okay, so let's continue after the four of stage, the human realms. Now we understand that we are living in human realms. But for the, the animal also, they share some data uh, around us. So human realm is very complicated by the different class of beings as a a location of the different class of being, human realms, no star. But because that is the place for the human being, this is called the uh, human realms, according to that, that you are playing or existent. Then if we go as the better life is the realm of uh, four great kings, Chattu Maharajika, Chattu Maharaja or Chattu Maharajika. Then uh, the second one, Tower Tensa, Yama, Tusita, yeah, Tusita, Tusa, delight. So delightful God. Uh, the Bodhisattva was born, usually. And Ram or Nima Narati, in this case, they, uh, they have the power to create something for, according to their uh, preference. The being Diwa in their realm of existence, if they like the, the specific color, they change. If they like specific form, and they can create, that's why and they enjoy through their own creation. This is called the Nima Narati. And the highest one, the Pranimita Wasawati, they, for them, they are more powerful. That's why they don't need to create. The other create, and the created item follow to their will. It's more powerful so for the enjoyment, the sensual sphere of heavens are uh, the good place, right place for them, enjoyment. But for the practice, the uh, human realm of existence is much better than the Dewa realms. Okay, anyhow, let's continue to the fine material sphere plane system. So the realm, the first, class of the first jhana, the realm of Brahma's retinues, 
Dhammaparasaja, although they are Brahma, but considered as the retinue of the, uh, the Mahabrahma. And the median class considered as a minister of the Mahabrahma, or as Mahabrahma, Mahabrahma the great Brahma, is the leader of these uh, three realms. So he is a leader, and medians are considered as the ministers and the, the weakest the weakest group as a retinue. But not they are not living in that way, but they can live in their own place and their own right, but according to the power, level of power they are considered. And the second jhana realm, minor, luster, and infinite and radiant. So these are according to the, um, the radiance, the power of radiance, they are classified into three. And for the third, the aura, and minor aura, uh, infinite, and steady. So three class. Okay, so for the fourth jhana, this class, the realm of great reward, we have a lot. We have a lot. Uh, here is complicated uh, by the class of being or the ordinary person, noble person can be found. Both have their, uh, all have their both mental process and material process, uh, unlike the, the another one. This one, the Asanya Sada. Uh, translated as non percipient being. So when you study this 31 plane of existence, then you should uh, read first the Pali, uh, the previous slide. Just read the Pali name. Although you don't remember, okay, and don't just go to the uh, translation. Uh, you need to read again and again to remember. Otherwise, you will not uh, remember and also you will not understand when we read uh, that's why more exist then mostly we refer the asanya sata asanya sata like this so if we refer uh in the further study asanya sata you need to recognize that being no met mentality at all only the beings they are non percipients so materiality group like this and also sudawasa uh, according to the class of sudawasa this is just that the uh different through the level of the Sattā, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya. Later, uh, after introducing about this power, uh, we will <clears throat> remind to connect this again. So those who have the strongest strong, the Sattā, confident is strong, he was reborn, he reborn in this, the lowest place. That is, and uh, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya in this way, uh, they, they are in the fight approach, pure approach, Sudawasa. So for the Aruba realm, so infinite space, this is a, the only translation. So uh, by seeing the translation also, you cannot understand what is mean that the realm of existence. But later, after studying, uh, consciousness and meaning of the name in the uh, later classes, and you will understand. So for Abhidharma teaching, when you are learning Abhidharma, you have to be patient because you know the, the, the whole teaching is connected, have the connected information. You keep some information at the beginning, that will be useful. Supporting further understanding in the, in the later lesson. And also the understanding in following lesson will make uh, will clarify your understanding in the former lesson. That is why, although some some parts you don't understand, okay, don't worry, just be patient and to continue. Uh, reading and studying. Later, you will realize, oh, because of this understanding, I understand this, this process like this. And they are connected to each other. And I try my best to arrange the, in the lesson 
to have the close connection. Sometimes I don't follow to the Epidamata Sangaha in the sequence. And because I just want to make the, uh, the close connection for the context so that you can easily understand. Uh, if we just follow the, uh, the context process, a sequence of the context in the Vita Mata Sangaha, sometimes it's quite far, cannot understand easily. So uh, the, for those who reach Vita Mata Sangaha by themselves, feel all oh, Vita is very difficult like this. But actually, if you study uh, with the close connection, not that difficult. And for the basis of Pitama, you can understand, no problem. Okay, so these are the, uh, the translation for the imagery as peer plane or existence. So you just need to uh, read to remember the name and translation. Then, okay, let's continue. I want to introduce about the plane or existence, more plane or existence. Here, we call the lowest plane, Apaya. Lowest plane, you may remember the lowest plane, Wofu state uh, called the Apaya in Pali. So this Apaya is the combination of Apa and Aya. To understand the word, the whole word Apaya, we need that kind of form or uh, uh, composition to understand. So Apa divides, divides and Aya is happiness. The plane divides of happiness, no happiness at all. Like this. It's called the Wofu plane in English and in Pali it is called the Apaya. So it covers all four Wofu plane of Niraya, Hell, Dirichana, Anima Kingdom, Beta, and the sphere of Angry Ghost, Asura. There we can call only one name Apaya because in this plane of existence, uh, the beyonds, the situation of being devoid of happiness. This one called the woeful state, full of the woeful feeling, woeful situation. And here, okay, realm of is this that misery. Here, the misery is greatly easy happiness. But sometimes, therefore, they are animals and beta, they can get released. Yeah, they can get released from the, uh, their suffering sometimes for some Plus, you, you, you see only that you see the animals also. Some animal, they live in comfort, in comfortable life. And some, although they, some are suffering, but they are miserable and pain is still the, the, the happiness. That is why considers as the apaya, awful state, awful state. And also, uh, they, these apaya for plane or existence are the place to be reborn of the evil doers, even evil doer as a consequence of their evil deeds of akusala karma. So akus those who commit the akusala karma were reborn in the apaya realm of existence as a consequence of their uh, evil deeds, their own evil deeds. Nobody is sending. So we can take the information, two information about the Apaya realms related to all Apaya realms. Niraya, we born as a consequence of evil deeds. And also those Dirichana may be appreciated by the uh, human being like a panda or something like this because they are rare and beautiful. The people uh, take care of them very well but the cause to be reborn as an animal is evil deal, Akusala Gama. Okay, so let's continue about the Niriya. Niriya is translated as hell, the lowest one in the plane of existence. And also here, the place of the most intense suffering, full of suffering, you know, the. Uh, the suffering in the hell is the Buddha said the out of imagination. So human being can imagine how suffer, but the real suffering in the hell is always a seed. 
the suffering in human imagination. So how fearful, better not to go. And also uh, without the moment respite. So here the uh, eight great hell. So for the plane of existence, eight great hell, uh, which et cetera. Then, so I just want to introduce you there here about the a number of hell, number of hell. So each great hell, there are four great hell, and each great hell is surrounded by the five minor hell. So and four uh, eight great hell and four minor hell. Uh, we have to multiply. Then also, uh, I say five great hair in four direction. So it's become the 160. Each great hair surrounded by the five minor hairs in four sides or four direction. So if we multiply and uh, become the 160 and adding the original eight great hair become the 168 hells in number. So many beings are suffering in this hell. Then Jiri Chana, so okay, let's consider about that. A realm of existence, human realm, one, only one human realm in the one cycle, in the one one cycle. Uh, there are six Dewa realm, seven. 20 Brahma realm, all together, a good destination, only 27, is it? Only 27, but for the hell, 168. How different, you know, the number. It means that maybe the demands or extension of the hell, uh, because of many beings are committing a wholesome, uh, doing the uh, evil deeds, they need to go. That's why uh, the hell need more number and larger area. Okay, it's, uh, okay let's continue about the uh, China. it's called the animal kingdom. So born as a result of evil too, because all are, are born in the Abaya as a result of uh, evil. And also the animal, although they around the, the human beings, human environment, we see that some can be happy in their life, but they are considered as, as the awful plane or existence because the suffering is it exceeds uh, amount of the happiness than amount. Then another one is uh, for themselves or animal themselves, uh, they are not comfortable to perform the meritorious deed, the wholesome kusala, because of their lack of understanding, lack of the knowledge according to their nature, uh, compared to the human being, they don't understand this is good and this is bad deed, usually, and some may be exception. And also, they have rare opportunity to perform the kusala gamma meritorious tea. That is why this considered as the Pirichana is the whole state. Then Peta, for the Peta, they have the, you, most of their life uh, passed by the intense hunger and thirst. Always, almost all the time, they are hungry and also they feel thirsty. And that kinds of hungry and thirsty uh, they are suffering. They suffer being hungry and thirsty. And also the other types of uncomfortable condition, affliction, um, are torturing them according to their dharma, not making by the others. And their body, like this, uh, you may heard about that, beta uh, um, around the Kecha Buddha, Papata, in the Buddha Gaya, if we go to Buddha Gaya, and there, and Rajagaha, and there the mountain, which called the uh, Pocha Peak, the Kecha Buddha, Pocha Peak. And around that, the very popular about the Peta at the time of the Buddha, Buddha pointed out many Petas around there, and because of different Gamma, they are suffering 
different weight in different weights. So that's why we can understand people's uh, their life is full of suffering. And they don't have any separate plane of existence for their own. They share with the human one. So three channel also share human realm of existence. Peter also share. And sometimes they, they live in the forest and walk and cemetery and around the river, ocean, like this. And they suffer. The place, wherever they, they are, maybe uh, even in the beautiful place, they are there, but they suffer. They cannot enjoy the uh, beautiful environment. This is the life of the Pita, uh, translated as hungry ghost. And Asura, this Asura is translated as the Titans. Titans are kind of beings still suffering in their life. So uh, this class can be uh, classified in different name or different class in the, according to the commentary explanation. And tormented spread or combat also. Uh, here, the, as I mentioned, that two types of asura. One is God in the heavens, heavenly beings. Not asura in the Oku state, but heavenly beings are Dewa asura. Okay, these are the uh, four Oku state. And it is time to introduce about the human beings. So because the uh, sensual blissful plane, seven sensual blissful planes start from the human as the lowest, then with the Dewa realms. So human, although this is considered as the lowest one according to the location, it is location, that many uh, strong points or, or the good condition than the Dewa sometimes because the human who have the sharp and developed minds. That is why uh, we, according to Buddhism, it emphasized a uh, human to, uh, to get to be reborn as a human being is not easy. And also it is a good opportunity to be human being to practice Dhamma because in the human realm, we, we can experience the suffering in our own experience. And we realize what is the suffering. And also, we can enjoy the happiness in our own experience. That's why enjoying or, or having experience in both sides of, of suffering and happiness. And we can learn about their nature. For the Dewa, most of them, they enjoy the happiness. They don't learn about, usually they don't learn about the suffering. That's why I rarely understand about the suffering and get the motivation to practice Dhamma. For human, as a nature, we can learn about suffering and happiness through our own experience. And for those who get uh, the teaching properly, and they are uh, full of capacity to practice Dhamma, that's why the human beings are considered as a sharp and development. And another consideration is because human beings uh, experience suffering and happiness uh, in the same life. That's why I learned a lot. Their mind become sharp because of that environment. For the Dewa, full of uh, you know, the pleasure, make their mind not very sharp in that uh, learning about the nature. But uh, naturally, they are might, they already bright, uh, usually. Uh, they, uh, the Dewa can easily understand if we explain. But according to their nature, they just try to enjoy. So it becomes not using the sharp mind. A human being uh, trying to struggle their life problems, they become sharp. So self and development mind. And also human being, because of the, the realm of existence itself, uh, uh, full of suffering and full of happiness in both sides. That's why they have the, a strong capacity 
to keep the moral preset and also to perform the immoral action than the other class of living being. Here, say that uh, if we develop the human being as a bodhisattva, become the Buddha. So the, the strong capacity to practice the moral, uh, moral, moral practice. And also can commit the serious crime of the killing the, the mothers and one's own father. This is a serious crime other than uh, killing the other beings. Also possible for the human being to commit. That is for the Dewa, they were born according to their karma and they were born as a, a being, like an appearance, uh, just uh, immediate appearance. They cannot kill their mother or father. But for the human being, they can kill their mother and father. And this is a, a very serious crime. And no restoring, just have to go to the hell directly. That's why it's considered as a serious crime. Also, so human being, good side and bad side, we can say that uh, as a nature of the human, human realm of existence. So human realm and can be understood as a mixture, both pain and pressure, suffering and happiness. Uh, okay, so uh, to be reborn as a human being is the result of the wholesome karma, wholesome karma. Although uh, the human beings suffer in the poor country, in the poor condition, but they are considered as the result of wholesome karma, kusala karma in the past he has done, and he was reborn as a human being. Because plain itself is bliss, blissful realm, blissful plane. So being in the blissful plane, be born as a result of the wholesome karma. This is for the uh, human realm. And the other seven and uh, six Dewa realms are uh, uh, introduced here, the one after another. Uh, I will not explain everything here and just introduce the, the lowest one is four great kings, leader by the four great kings, different class of the divine beings, divine beings. So uh, here, divine king of the Tarata, and also the this is the leader of the Gandaba. So Gandaba, they like to do play music, musical, and dancing. The class of Dewa, they enjoy for that, and leader by the Tarata, king of the Tarata, and also uh, the Virunaka, this is called Kumbanda. <clears throat> Kumbanda and they uh, they have the treasures like this and they enjoy keeping treasure and the group of Naga led by the uh, King Wirupeka, Wirupeka this and also considered as the dragon of very powerful uh, divine beings and also the Yaka. So in Myanmar, it's called the Yekha, translated as Palu. It's everybody afraid of that. But actually, they are called the Dewa Yekha. So Dewa Yekha, but they are very good. You know, the, like a Himawata or like this, uh, connected to the, the Buddhas. And also they are disciples of the Buddha. Many Yekha are good. But if we heard about the Yekha, uh, we Myanmar people, uh, we are afraid of that. Uh, and also uh, sometimes separate, but it's different from them. Separate called the beta, different. So beta, because in their life, they are suffering. They always get angry and they want to try to make the problem with the human beings. But for the, the Yekha in the Chattu uh, Maharaja, this as a divine beings, and most of them, are not very cruel, but some still have the, the cruel yaka. Also, that's why they're afraid. Always ugly, but actually it should be sometimes beautiful because they are considered as a divine dewa. So, so in Myanmar, I don't see any beautiful yaka, uh, yaka statue, but always, you know, the fearful. That should be beautiful, right? 
So lead by the Wisawana. So because of the Dharata, Virulaka, Virupaka, Wisawana, four great kings. This realm of existence is called the Chattu Maharajika Devarams. And the second Devaram, 33, 33 is Tinsa in Pali. So it becomes the Tawa Tinsa. So uh, ruled by the Saka and King Saka and is 33 assistant. So uh, here, okay, it should be uh, 33 assistant. So uh, altogether, th 33 gods lead that one. So they are city, capital city is Sutasana, very popular in the Buddhist scripture because of the Saka come to the uh, human realm and group of Dewa usually come uh, to ask the question to the Buddha. So Tawa Tinsa, these two lowest realm of Dewa are uh, ruled by the Saka. So four great kings also under Saka. In the Sutta, we found that these four great kings attend the meeting of the Saka at this, so Dewa meeting. <clears throat> okay, then Yama, is the leader is Suyama, the great happiness, great happiness. And Suyama or Yama, this is the great leader. And Tusita as a realm of the Bodhisattva, uh, delightful realms, Tusita. And Nimanarati, and they create the object for their enjoyment, uh, uh, according to their desire, whatever they like, and they create and enjoy. <clears throat> For the last one, running with our sour tea, and they do not need to create, and they just make the wish for their enjoyment. Uh, the items are created by the others, follow to their the their use or their will, and they, they have attendance like this uh, and they and they and they create it. Okay, these are the uh, short information about their uh, six. Salasha beams or six Dewa realms. So uh, up to this, altogether, uh, 11 planar existence are considered as their uh, sensual planar existence. So I think, okay, this is the time to stop for explanation. And the remaining part I will explain in the next class. Continue. I'll continue. Okay. Uh, thank you for your attention.